Movies, TV series, and documentaries show us basically two situations. You get on a cruise ship and set out on a sea voyage, and during a storm, the vessel sinks. The good news is you survive. The bad news is you're in the middle of the sea. Another situation is that you're flying on an airplane. Something goes wrong, the engines catch fire, and the plane crashes into the ocean. Water surrounds you, and you don't know what to do. In both cases, you have a high chance that rescuers will save you. Flight controllers quickly find out that a plane has crashed into the sea. The same applies to large ships. Modern navigation and communication methods help rescuers find you quickly, especially if several people get in trouble. But let's imagine another, more terrible situation. Let's say you are at a seaside resort and tell your friends you want a snack. You go to the beach, buy some food, and decide to have lunch in the open sea. You rent a catamaran or a small boat, sail away from the shore, and fall asleep. Intense heat wakes you up, and you find yourself in the middle of the sea. You have no idea where the shore is and how long you've been here. Fortunately, you have a phone, but the bad news is that it's run out of battery. At this point, you may start to panic, and no matter how corny it sounds, don't do that. Boundless waters from all sides can make you nervous. Feeling like a little particle in a giant sea can cause existential horror. But you have to understand that panic will only make things worse. You have to keep your sanity and think clearly. To begin with, you're in an advantageous position because you have a boat. Some people get stuck at sea with nothing, so you have a better chance of surviving. By the way, if you're in the water without a boat, but you have pants, then you can easily make a life jacket. Just tie two pant legs in a knot. After that, start splashing water with your hand, making air bubbles so that the resulting air gets inside the pants. After that, grab the upper part tightly to prevent the air from escaping and put them around your neck. Now you have an air vest. Okay, back to you, stuck on a boat in the sea. You don't have pants, only a pair of shorts and a t-shirt. In addition, you have the remains of a burrito and some water in a bottle. Please don't drink it all at once. Try to make it last as long as possible. And it's also important not to drink seawater. Salt in it will cause even more intense thirst and trouble for your organism. You need to collect fresh water from the rain. Keep the bottle open and let your clothes get wet. The important point is that if you've swum in the sea wearing these clothes, they're covered with a thin layer of salt. So first, let your t-shirt get soaked by rainwater, then squeeze it to wash off all the salt, and only after that use your clothes to collect fresh liquid. Great, you have a whole bottle of fresh water. Take small sips several times daily, and you will have enough for a week. Now you need to get some fish. The good news is that sea creatures have approached you. The boat attracts the attention of marine life. They come to you out of curiosity or to use the boat as shelter. All you have to do now is catch lunch. If you're wearing shoes, use laces or tear off a piece of fabric from your clothes to make a small rope. Attach a piece of your burrito or any object to the rope's end and start fishing. Now you have food and water and nothing to worry about. Except for sharks. Bright colors or a drop of blood in the sea attract these hunters. You can scare them away by screaming and hitting your hands on the water. Make more noise. You will scare the fish, and they will understand that they have come across not a defenseless seal, but a very dangerous beast. A human. Yes, a fight with a shark sounds like something out of science fiction movies, but if you have nothing to lose, it's better to hit it on the nose than to swim away in panic. So you have fish, water, and authority. Life is good, but you're missing something. Oh yes, you need to get to dry land to survive. You can also attract the attention of an airplane or a passing ship. It's okay if you don't have a signal rocket. Your phone will help rescuers notice you. Use the mirror panel of your device to reflect sunlight and use the beam as a signal. There's a high probability that people on a ship passing by or even pilots of a plane flying by will see it. Keep your phone ready so as not to miss the rescuers. By the way, many boats have flares and life jackets with glowing signals under the seats. Use them at night and people will see you from afar. Unfortunately, there's no such thing on your tourist boat, so the phone is your only way to indicate yourself. You need to start navigating the sea if you don't see anyone who could save you. If you don't see the shore, look at the water. It takes a lighter shade in shallow water, so if you see something like this next to the boat, move in that direction. Also, pay close attention to the direction of waves. They are heading towards the shore. Look at the sky. If you notice a group of gulls or other birds, follow them. Sooner or later, they will lead you to the beach. But the main landmark in the open sea is the sun. It always rises in the east and sets in the west. 
At noon, it shines strictly from the south if you're in the northern hemisphere. And if you're in the southern hemisphere, the sun is in the north in the middle of the day. Focusing on these signs will let you understand your location and move toward the shore. But what if you still have no idea which way to go? Try to imagine a morning in your hotel. Remember where the sun was and in what position you were relative to it. For example, if you were standing on the balcony and saw the sun rising to the right of your windows, you were facing south. Being in the open sea, imagine the direction of your hotel or house relative to the morning sun and then move in that direction. There are other signs pointing toward the shore. If the water becomes muddy, it means that somewhere nearby, a river flows into the sea. Move along this muddy water. The greenish tint under the clouds shows that they are above the land. So, you've already been drifting for several days and have finished all your water supplies. At some point, you hear the screams of seagulls. You look up and see where they are flying. You follow them and notice some muddy water. You're hungry, exhausted, and thirsty, but happy because you know the shore is ahead. As night falls, you notice city lights in the distance. By the morning, you reach the land and return to your hotel. There are many chances for salvation, but you can only use them if you observe one condition. Keep calm from the very beginning. People have survived after several weeks and even a year of being stuck in the open sea. Some were floating on a broken vessel, an inflatable boat, or a ship's wreckage. And every time, the desire for life, willpower, and faith help them handle it. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.